I can't believe training camp is almost here, right? right. With the quarterback of the Panthers, Felix Harper, ready for year two in the IFL. How you doing, young man? Man, I'm blessed, man. You know, I'm, I'm wonderful taking it day by day. Uh, I'm happy to be here, and, you know, thanks for having me, man. Oh, my pleasure. Every time I see you, and I think it's a good thing, you say you're blessed. In fact, I talked to you after your first start in Frisco. Yes. And you were, you were good. Four touchdown passes. You had one running, but it was a tough loss. Man, and I tough remember loss. <laughs> a lot of folks in the locker room afterwards, and I come up to you and I say, hey, how you feeling? And you said, I'm blessed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, that was my first professional football game. So most definitely I was happy and blessed, but I was sick with the loss. But, you know, Coach Dixie, man, he just sat me down for a few seconds. Was like, man, you got to understand, like, you know, this is a blessing, man. A lot of people don't get to play this game. So you, you get you're able to showcase your talent, you know, on this level. And I sat there and thought about it like, man. He said, you didn't do bad at all. Like, don't even look at it like you did bad, son. Like, you know, just enjoy the moment. So I was just enjoying the moment and, uh, you know, just took that on the chin and was just like, man, what could I do better? You know, I was happy with my performance, but even the team was happy with my performance. They believed in me, and that also gave me a, another spark of just saying, like, okay, I'm able to do this. I'm able to play professional football. And, uh, you know, I worked so hard for that, and it's like, when the opportunity actually comes, it's like it was a shocking, like, man, I really can do this. So, you know, it was a blessing. I thank God, you know, for um, giving me the opportunity and also the coaches for believing in me with that opportunity as well. So, you know, I just want to keep continuing working hard and making this organization proud, man. I remember the morning of the game. In fact, I didn't know until I got to the arena. So what's that dude running around out there? You know, yeah. Dalton Snee was <laughs> sick that day. Right. And you find out basically last minute, you know, you're going to be out there. So how did that conversation go with you getting the run and the mental preparation you had to go out there and play? Man, so I'm going to tell you how – this is a funny story. So um, we was doing walkthroughs the day before. And uh, we were just all preparing, getting ready for the game. And then the next morning I was there early, ready to go, locked in. Because, you know, as a backup quarterback, you got to make sure that you're preparing like the starter and coach Dixie makes sure that goes on within day in and day out within his office. Cause you never know his next man up within all positions, not just quarterback. So I was on the phone, my parents, like before we started like walkthroughs and meetings and coach Rob was like, he said, you ready? You locked in? I'm like, yeah, come on. He's like, he's like, nah, you got to go today. I was like, oh man. I was like, what? I said, mom, I'm gonna call you back. I'm gonna call you back. I'm like, yeah. So, it was a funny story. I was like, man, but, I mean, I was always prepared. You know, Coach Dixie always made sure, as in the QB room, we was leaders and made sure that we was always locked in from all aspects and not just in the game, also, you know, outside of the game, you know, how you carry yourself in the community as well. So I was just locked in and prepared, man, and I appreciate Snead as well for believing in me as well, you know, giving me the keys to the offense that day. And was like, man, I believe in you too, man. I, I know what you do in practice, and, and I'm pretty sure the talent that you showed me and you showed this team is we're going to get the job done. And which we did, but of course we came up short. But, you know, it was, it was, a, great, it was a great experience for me. And, uh, you know, just believing in myself and showing that we, we, we can do this. Is that tough at all, Felix, as the backup you know, week after week? Because the number one guy is going to get most of the reps, most right? Definitely. And – to be prepared to play when most of the time you're not. Right. Um, it's, it's tough, but it's not tough because it's a mindset. Because, you know, like I said before, next man up, you never know what can happen. Like, I, I see people that get seasoned in the injuries. And you got to be prepared within this game to say, okay, I'm fully locked in and focused and we're ready to you know, carry this season on for this team. And especially for quarterback, like I said, i always been like the next man up like throughout my whole career. So it happened in college and it kind of happened in high school. So with me preparing myself within this game, like you never know what can happen. And I tell, even when I was a starter, I told my backup quarterbacks, like you never know what can happen. Please stay focused. Please stay locked in because at the end of the day, 
you might have a chance to showcase your talent with them without you knowing when it will happen. So just always stay prepared, man. And uh, that's about it. And I just make sure I, I work on that each and every day. And uh, me and Snead competed every day, and it made both of us better. So within he was playing or I was playing, I knew that the team believed in both of us. And we was able to get the job done and, and able to bring the championship back to this organization. And we're trying to do that again this year. Hey, Felix, what's the learning curve like from the outdoor game to the indoor game for a quarterback? How complicated is it with the smaller field, dealing with walls, receivers, having to go over the wall, uh, the whole scheme right. and everything else? Man, so crazy story. My first game, I seen JT go over the wall. like Northern Arizona. Yes, Northern Arizona. I was like, oh, my goodness, like this is really going on. But it was a great experience, man, and – uh far as me changing outdoor game into indoor game, it's, it's much faster. But I always had great anticipation as a quarterback, and I was able to read defenses. So I feel like that was my plus for me as a quarterback coming into this game. So it wasn't really just hard for me to, you know, transfer that over. But I feel like if you're trying to learn this game, man, it just takes time. And, you know, you got to stay working at it and being consistent with them you know, the process you try to learn within this game. And Coach Dixie had made sure that I was – I'm talking about after practice, before practice, just making sure I was studying, getting the plays down, the concepts, and, uh, you know, just the coverage because it's way different coverages. And it's not way different coverages, I say, but it's, it's kind of different coverages in here than you will see in an outdoor game because of how small the field is. So, yeah, just learning that. And uh, it was pretty cool, man, but I enjoy this game. Man. I love it. Hey, since you mentioned JT going over the wall, I was looking while you were talking. I found that play. Check it out. Fourth down and four for the Panthers. Play fake. Sneed goes to the air. He's got Stokes. He elevates. He rolls into the crowd, and he's got the Bay Area touchdown. What an athletic play. A full flip over the wall right there for JT Stokes. That's Man, crazy. That's crazy. That was a fourth down, too. That was a big-time play. Yes. Hey, Felix, you were talking before about being the backup. You've been there in college before. Going back to your time at Alcorn State, you had Noah Johnson ahead of you, and he was a really right. good player. In fact, he was with the Panthers right. in training camp last year. You had to buy your time and wait. What, what did you learn from uh, that experience about patience? Yes. Man, I tell uh, up-and-coming players that now, like, man, it's just patience, man. You never know uh, what God has in store for you. Um, you know, it's about just staying down. And, and enjoying the process, and I, and I and I've been going through that for the past three years because this is my upcoming third year playing professionally. So I just just stay down, put your head down, and put God first, and, and continue to work, man. And it's consistency, and as long as you consistent with your work ethic, I promise, like the the work is going to pay off. And uh, just stand patient, man. And I, and I learned that throughout my college experience because I was almost at a time I wanted to quit, and. I just stayed strong, prayed about it, and just stayed consistent with the grind. And and I'm here today, man. I always say every time when you ask me how am I doing, I'm like, bro, I'm blessed. I, I, I can't complain. I'm living the dream day by day. And uh, I still want to keep it going. Hey, tell me that time about wanting to quit. When was that? And, and Man, that was, was, that was my – I think that was like my sophomore, my red shirt junior. It was one of those years. That was the year before I started. And I played, though. So it was like I was so hungry to just, man, like, why am I not playing? Why am I not playing? I'm playing, but why am I not the starter? So, like, you can't compare yourself to someone else. And I learned that throughout the process. Like, what's meant for you is meant for you. And just, you know what I'm saying, just stay patient and, and work at it. And I feel like that's in everything in life. You know, everybody has different, you know, goals and inspirations in their life. And uh, and I look at that more than just football. You know, it could be a regular job. Like, you can't compare yourself to another person. And uh, me and my pops was talking about that the other day. And it's, you know, just stay patient and uh, enjoy your life, man. Enjoy your process. And, uh, you know, take it a day at a time. When you were a little kid, were you as patient like that? Did you have that life lesson down? But I really um, did. I was really I was, my parents said I was a good kid. I wasn't a bad kid at all. I wasn't a bad kid at all. I had good grades. Um, you know, I listened to my parents. I was I, I was blessed to have two parents, you know, in my household. You know, I know a lot of people have 
you know, single parent. So I was thankful for that. And, you know, and I'm thankful for my parents for raising me to the young man I am today. You know, we were talking about setting up this interview for the last couple of weeks. He said, ah, Dave, I got you know, two workouts today. I got two yeah. workouts tomorrow. <laughs> Finally, I get you when you have one workout. So what's the schedule like doing two workouts? And obviously you're, you're ramping up big time for training camp. Right. Uh, so basically, you know, I work out probably like Monday through Friday. Um, I work out at like 4.30 in the morning. I train for his weight room. And I appreciate my trainer for getting me, uh, you know, right with those situations and uh, getting me stronger, getting me more fit and more faster on the field. And also I'm doing um, workout sessions for his throwing sessions. And I be with professional athletes as well for his NFL, CFL, and other guys that's in the IFL or Arena League, however you want to put it. And uh, so I train 4.30 in the morning, and then I also train at 12 in the afternoon. So – I got two sessions like that. Sometimes I work out three, but it's just about the consistency and just staying at it, staying grind. I know some days I'd be tired. Some days I'd be like, man, do I feel like working out today? But you just got to stay consistent and, you know, believing in yourself and believing that the, the, the work will pay off. Felix, what's the third workout? Man, so it would be sometimes I would do a, a, um, a weight room, then a speed and agility. And then I will uh, throw. So I, as a quarterback, a lot of guys are like, why are you doing speed and agility? Like, you, you don't need that. Like, you just, you know, throw the football. But I'm like, nah, a quarterback definitely needs good footwork. And that's what I would say for his Coach Dixie. He made sure that me and Sneed was always working on our footwork after practice or before practice. That's a big key in this arena, in this IFL game. You mentioned the footwork and the guy you're competing with for that starting job, Daquan Neal's run a little bit in his career yes. as well. How do you view this competition? You've paid some dues as well. So is that guy. You got right. two talented players who are both good people embracing that challenge while you're supporting each other. For sure. Um, he's a great quarterback, man. I, I heard he um he won MVP twice, right? Correct? One time. One time, yes. Two Rookie of the year and MVP in the same year. Yeah, that's big. That's a that's a real big accomplishment. So I definitely know that he has great talent, man. He's a great quarterback. I seen him in Vegas last year. We played against him. Um, yeah, he's a great dude, man, and uh, very humble. And, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm appreciative to have him in the room. You know, I'm ready to work with him. You know, I'm, of course, you know, a competition, it comes down to that. And uh, competing against each other makes us both better as quarterbacks and as people. But uh, I'm ready, man, you know, ready to work, ready to work with him and Coach Dixie within this next season. Again, I'm ready to run it back, man. For those that don't know Felix Harper's story, you had a stint with the Cleveland Browns and Canada as well. What would you learn about those short experiences that, you know what, if I'm going to get to that next level and stick, I have to get better at what? Right. Um, I had a great time in Cleveland, man. I was uh, unfortunately cut before preseason, but um, – uh, I would say the thing I had to learn for is going to Cleveland was the terminology. I learned it when I was there. It was big. I was studying each each and every day. But a lot of people don't understand, like, being a quarterback in the NFL, is it's, it's a lot, man. You got to know the coverages. You got to make sure you know what everybody's doing. And, it's, 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 and this is all professional. IFL, AFL, Canadian League, and the NFL, UFF, UFL, they just uh, – come merged uh the other day um quarterbacks has to be leaders on and off the field you have to know what everybody doing you have to know the coverages you have to know the the checks like it's it's just it's different and and i've been doing that my whole life and that's why i tell people like of course i know i'm undersized but i i feel like you know i'm able to get the job done within this size or not so just knowing the terminology, I feel like that it was that was big on the uh, NFL level, and uh, you know just staying at it and and being consistent. That's big about the NFL level too. They want to see consistency on that off the field. Make sure you're consistent within your game. While you're trying to climb to the next level, like all of us are coaches, players, announcers, right? Right. What about the importance for you of winning? Last year, you were part of a championship team. You had success at Alcorn State. You went in the swack, right? Trying to run it back, getting another ring. How important is that to you? Man, I feel like that's very important because I feel like 
this is going to – this is another stepping stool, not just for me, but just the coaches and other players, you know, being able to run it back twice. I know a lot of – some people that's coming on the team, it's going to be their three-peat. For us, Trey Meadows and uh, Coach Rob, this is going to be a three-peat for them. So, like, if we're able to do that, man, I feel like that's going to be a big accomplishment for us, and especially on the next level. Everybody wants to get to the next level. Of course, you're enjoying the blessing that you have now, but ain't nothing like the next one. You know, I, I hear Tom Brady say, "What's the, what's the what's the best ring you got? The next one." Like I, I'm, I'm satisfied with what I got now, but ain't nothing like the next one. So I just feel like us just staying at it, working at it, consistency, getting together as a team, believing in one another, all on one accord. And I guarantee, I feel like we'll come out victorious, man. I feel like we can do it again. You mentioned those two or three workouts to get you ready to try to do it again. What do you do in your downtime? Man, I I, I usually I get that question asked a lot. Uh, my downtime, you know, I have my own clothing brand, so I, I work on that at, at times. But, like, just to get my mind off football because I'm so focused on football each and every day, I go skating or I go bowling, man. Bowling, were you as good as Rankin last year? Yes, me and Rank compete all the time, like, there, every week we'll go bowling once a, once a week, and it, it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. I want to sell some clothing, so tell me about your brand and how yes. people get it. So uh, my clothing brand name is Felix Mion. If you don't know, that's my full first name. But I go by Felix because it's hard for some people to pronounce Felix Mion. And uh, my dad had the clothing brand for 20-plus years, so I just love fashion. I love to – you know, look presentable, dress nice, which I won the best dress award last year for the uh, team. So, uh, yeah, man, I just – that's what I also do on my downtime. And uh, I have a link. I can send you the link where you can, you know, get people to support the brand, and I'd be very thankful for that. And, I got uh, you. Yes, of course. So, I, And I just be working on that, just coming up with ideas, you know, just trying to – you know, be able to, to uh, show people that you could also, you know, do something else f- further than just football for us athletes that, that I'm big, that I'm a big inspiration for in this community back at home in Atlanta, Georgia as well. Spell that link to the, to the brand. Uh, it's F E L I X M E U O N.com. So it'd be F M dot Felix com. So what kind of clothing is it? Uh, I have sportswear. I have graphic tees. I have just, you know, sweatsuits, um, however you name it, just regular T-shirts, sweatsuits. I know a lot of – it's a different style nowadays, so a lot of people go into, like, the flare, the flare pants look, the oversized. You know, it's like a full – it's like a full circle. Like my dad said back in the day, like, people was wearing big T-shirts and big – sweatpants and big jeans and then it went to a skinny jean phase to people on the slim fit look but now it was going back to how it was in the 80s and the 90s where it's like or even you want to say the 70s that they got the little flare pants like the oversized look so i don't went targeted towards that for as my crowd and my brand and you know a lot of people like it so that stuff would look good on me yeah always man you're too cool for school man <laughs> you're too cool for school I'll see you around training camp and I'll represent, all right? Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're good people. Look forward to seeing you coming up. The Panthers go for the repeat of the championship. They open up against the Arizona Rattlers at the SAP Center. Yes, sir. Felix, I appreciate your time. Look forward to seeing you. I appreciate you for having me, man. This is a blessing, man. I thank you for, uh, you know, just willing to do this with me. And uh, hopefully we can get some more, man, you know. Panthers quarterback, Felix Harper. You're the man. Yes, sir. (laughs) Wow, wow, wow.